Thank you, Father Jim and Father Tim, for presenting your young parishioners for the Sacrament of Confirmation. Did you notice how your pastor spoke with such conviction about how well instructed and well prepared you are for confirmation? They have a lot of confidence in you. As a matter of fact, I was talking to Father Jim before Mass, and I said, do they know this, do they know this, do they know this? I didn't get a chance to ask Father Tim. And he said, definitely, Bishop, they do. Because you know, I usually ask questions, which makes your priests a little bit nervous. Because if you don't know the answers, I'll probably transfer them. <laughs> Talk about pressure, huh? The, uh, but I can see a look of confidence on your faces. And since your priest said how well instructed you are, I thought I'd do something different tonight. Rather than ask you questions, I'll ask your sponsors the questions. <laughs> now, if you thought they look nervous, you should look at, you should see the faces of the sponsors. Just kidding, sponsors. This is, oh, <laughs> this is a great night in your life because tonight you become fully initiated in the Catholic Church. As you know, we have seven sacraments. The sacraments are the master works of God in the new creation. These great gifts that Jesus gave us, that he instituted to share with us his life and his love, his sanctifying grace, the grace that makes us holy. And three of the seven sacraments are sacraments of initiation. What are the three sacraments of initiation? Yes. Baptism. Yes. Holy Eucharist. Confirmation. So you've already received baptism and the Holy Eucharist. And I want you to think now about what happened when you were baptized. The baptism is the first sacrament. It's the gateway to all of the sacraments. You can't receive any sacrament unless you've first been baptized. When you were baptized, and I think probably for most of you, you were infants. You weren't able to profess the faith. Your parents and your godparents professed faith for you. They renounced Satan, and they professed faith for you. And something wonderful happened. There are particular effects of the sacrament of baptism. What happened to you? I don't mean water was poured over you. That's what happened on the outside. But what happened to you inside when you were baptized? Anyone? Yes. That's right, Junipero. You chose the name of Father Junipero Serra, great Franciscan saint, great missionary too. Would you stand up, Junipero? You were cleansed of original sin because when we're born in the world, we're born without God's grace. So we're born in the state of original sin. You were washed clean of original sin. And what did you become? That's right, a new creation. You became an adopted what? An adopted son of God. And young ladies, you became adopted daughters of God. And that's your great dignity. That's our great dignity as Christians. We are adopted sons and daughters of God. We become part of a family, right, Junipero? And what is that family called? The church. So also at baptism, we become members of God's church, his family. And we're united to Christ in our souls. So if God, the Father, we're his adopted sons and daughters. We're brothers and sisters of Christ. What about the third person of the Blessed Trinity? Who is that? The Holy Spirit. Did the Holy Spirit come to you at baptism? Yes, and you became a temple of the Holy Spirit. Wow, that's excellent. He got everything. Deacon Jim. 
Deacon Jim, do you have an application to the seminary I can give this young man? Good, good. Way to go, Hunikado. I think he deserves some applause. Okay. Wow, that's great. Now, thinking about baptism, what happens tonight in confirmation is you are confirmed in your baptism. In other words, what happened at baptism is completed. You receive an increase of the gifts of the Holy Spirit that you received at baptism. And not only that, you become, you become more firmly united to Jesus Christ and to his body, the church. More firmly united to Christ and his church. An increase of the gifts of the Holy Spirit and the special strength, the special strength to bear witness to Christ in word and in deed. In other words, you receive the power to live your faith. We all need that, because it's not always easy to obey the commandments and to follow Christ, to live his love in this world. So we need help, and the helper is the Holy Spirit. You will come up to be confirmed and I will anoint you on the forehead with the sacred chrism. And I will say, as I anoint you, be sealed with the gift of the Holy Spirit. This is a permanent mark, a permanent seal on your soul, indelible. It cannot be taken away. Which means the Holy Spirit permanently dwells with you to give you his strength his power, his love, so that you can live as faithful followers and friends of Jesus Christ. That's what confirmation is all about. And you say yes. What do you say after I say, be sealed with the gift of the Holy Spirit? What's your response? Everyone? Amen. Amen. So be it. Now remember that. The other day, I was confirming and I, there was a young man, and I said, be sealed with the gift of the Holy Spirit. He said, peace be with you. I said, and with your spirit. <laughs> I, we were all messed up, you know, so, so don't confuse me tonight, okay? I say, be sealed with the gift of the Holy Spirit. You say, amen. I say, peace be with you. And you say, and with your spirit. Got it? Now, if you were listening to our first reading, St. Paul gave us some great, great advice. He said, live by the Spirit, not according to the flesh. What does he mean by that? If we live according to the flesh, he means we live in a worldly way. We live just for ourselves. To live according to the flesh is to be selfish. My own flesh, whatever I want to do, my own selfish desires. That's how a person lives by the flesh. And they do what are called deeds of darkness, according to St. Paul, which are sins. They live in sin. Sin is basically selfishness. Someone who's living by the flesh doesn't care about what God's will is, doesn't care about obeying God's commandments. He or she is just living for himself. But one who lives that way is very unhappy. As a matter of fact, miserable. Think about it. When we sin, let me give you an example. Let's say, obviously you love your parents. Let's say you, you disobey your mom or dad. And not only disobey them, you disrespect them, but you say something really, really cruel or mean that really hurts them. That you really hurt your parents one of your parents that way. How do you feel afterwards? You feel terrible. If you have a good conscience, at least, you feel like, 
man, why did I say that? Why did I get angry? Speak that way to my mom. Or speak that way to my dad. See, that's every sin leads to misery, makes us miserable. And I could go through any other of the commandments because sins hurt other people and ultimately hurt ourselves. We're not happy. And some people go through life living according to the flesh and they're never happy. Why did God give us the commandments and why did Jesus give us the Beatitudes? Why did Jesus teach us all that he taught us some people think, oh, it's so hard to be a Catholic because we have to follow these rules or these commandments and, you know, this is so oppressive. No, it isn't. God gave us the commandments to make us happy. When we obey and follow Christ, we experience joy in our lives and peace in our lives. We're, we have what are called the fruits of the Holy Spirit. So if you ever ask, want to ask yourself, okay, am I on the right track? Am I living by the Spirit? Check out the fruits. And if you see those fruits in your life and if you're growing in those fruits, then you know you're on the right track. Now, how do you live by the Spirit? Let me give you some advice. I think there's four very important things for us to do if we're going to live by the Spirit. Number one, Pray, obviously. To live by the Spirit means we have a real friendship, a relationship, a close relationship with the Lord Jesus. It's very hard to live by the Spirit. We can't unless we're close to Christ. So we pray. Number two, receive the sacraments. Receive the sacraments, and especially the Holy Eucharist. Every Sunday and Holy Day. That doesn't mean, if we're living by the Spirit, it doesn't mean we go to Mass once or twice a month. God said, keep holy the Lord's Day. Every week, one hour. If we're living by the Spirit, we come to church on Sunday to give praise and thanks to God and receive the spiritual food that we need. The Holy Eucharist, the body and blood of Jesus that nourishes us and strengthens us in our Christian life. Number three, if we're living by the Spirit, it also means that we, when we go to confession, when we mess up. Because none of us is perfect. I'm not perfect. Your priests aren't perfect. Your parents and grandparents aren't perfect. Your sponsors aren't perfect. You're not perfect. We, we sometimes mess up. We fall. And the devil is happy when we fall. And you know what he wants? He wants us to stay down and get discouraged by our sins. Jesus wants us to get up. And he forgives us. If we go to him, with sorrow for our sins, with contrition. And we do that in confession, the sacrament of penance. So to live by the Spirit is to go to confession regularly, as well as, as I mentioned, going to Mass every Sunday and Holy Day. And finally, the fourth thing I would mention, live by the Spirit, besides prayer, the sacrament of penance, the sacrament of the Eucharist, number four is reading the scriptures, especially the Gospels. How can we follow Jesus Christ if we don't know him? And where do we get to know him? We read the scriptures, especially the four Gospels. We learn about his life, his teachings. And the more we know him, the more we love him. So live by the Spirit. And I guarantee, I guarantee your life will be fulfilled. You will have those wonderful fruits. And what are they? What are the 12 fruits of the Holy Spirit? Raise your hand if you know, and we'll just go around till we get all 12. Yes. Gentleness. Yes. Love. Yes. That's one of the gifts. Wisdom. I know I get the mixed up sometimes. Yes. 
peace. Yes. Patience. Joy. Yes. Generosity. We're halfway there. Yes. Goodness. Yes. Kindness. Yes. Self-control. I think we're up two more. If I'm keeping right track. Yes. Faithfulness. Two more besides that. Faithfulness. Yes. Chastity, and one that's very close to chastity, including how you dress. Yes. Modesty. Think about those fruits. And especially the first three. Love, joy, and peace. That's God's will for us. And when we follow Christ, we do his will, we strive to do God's will, we will have the joy and peace that this world cannot give. And all those confirmation names that you chose, Sebastian, Maria, Francis, Valentine, Dominic, Dimpna, all those holy men and women live by the Spirit. And some of them, in following Christ and living by the Spirit with courage, they even died for Christ. They shed their blood. They wouldn't even deny Christ when they were being tortured, like St. Cecilia, a beautiful, beautiful young woman. What do we call a saint who dies for Christ? Yes. A martyr. And martyr is a Greek word which means witness. The Holy Spirit strengthens you in confirmation to go forth and to bear witness to Christ with courage. And when you do, you will bear abundant fruits. We'll see the fruits of the Holy Spirit in your lives. Candidates, please stand. Spirit, come refresh us with your fire of love. Holy Spirit, come renew us, heal us with your love. Give us a gift of wisdom, 
wisdom to follow the truth, giver of gifts and light of the world, Veni Sancte Spiritus, Holy Spirit. Yeah.
adios tan grande como tú. No lo hay, no lo hay, no hay Dios tan grande como tú. No lo hay, no lo hay, no hay Dios que haga maravillas como las que haces tú. No hay Dios que haga maravillas como las que haces tú. No con espadas ni con ejércitos, mas con tu Santo Espíritu. No con espadas ni con ejércitos, mas con tu Santo Espíritu. Y esos montes se moverán, y esos montes se moverán, y esos montes se moverán, mas con tu Santo Espíritu. No hay Dios tan grande como tú, no lo hay, no lo hay, no hay Dios tan grande como tú. Paras y con ejércitos, mas con tu Santo Espíritu. No con espadas ni con ejércitos, mas con tu Santo Espíritu. Y esta iglesia se moverá. Y esta iglesia se moverá. Y esta iglesia se moverá. No hay Dios tan grande como tú. No lo hay, no lo hay. No hay Dios tan grande como tú. No lo hay, no lo hay. No hay Dios que haga maravillas como las que haces tú. No hay Dios que haga maravillas. Como las que haces tú, no con espadas ni con ejércitos, mas con tu Santo Espíritu. No con espadas ni con ejércitos, mas con tu Santo Espíritu. Thank you. 
with holy fire, burning bright to light our way. Blaze among us and inspire lives that praise you day by day. Must draw your people near when our love grows weak or cold. Free our frozen hearts from fear that each story may be told. Melt away the masks we wear, hiding what we know and fear. Risking growth we want to share, love in action, love that's real. Open hearts affirm us all, many splendored one in you. We embrace the work, the call, you are making all. 